Hello noble ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. Today we have another video from the series Weapon vs Weapon and we're going to discuss swords versus axes. Let's get to it. So, sword versus axis, sword versus axis. This is a very big topic, so let's get to it straight away. Um, the first thing that we have to keep in mind is considering what an axe is. Well, an axe can be considered as an implement. It's been, we've been using axes for really, really long time. If we look at it from a historical point of view, we can see that we see the appearance of the first uh, axis uh, called hand axis in the Paleolithic era. So we, of course we're talking about an axe which is diff very different from what we're used to, uh, but it still, it still is an axe. And what, what they were used for, they were used for lots of different things, you know, building stuff, cutting stuff, splitting stuff. And uh, these axes were made of stone. Um, the kind of stone depends on the culture and the country, so sometimes it will be flint. Now, the fact that they are called hand axes is because they were used without any kind of haft. So before seeing actual hafted axes, we need to wait for the Mesolithic era. This is when this new implement was invented. And in the Neolithic era, the axe, particularly in Scandinavian country, started to become not only a more perfected um, kind of, uh, of implement, considering that clearly uh, technology improved, but also, particularly in Scandinavian Scandinavian areas, a form of a symbol of social status. And this is where uh, games law, for example Skyrim, uh, take this idea from. Now, for, before getting the actual comparison of effectiveness between this weapon and an axe, uh, we need to keep in mind a few things. So first of all, when we say the word axe, just like when we say the word sword, we have a huge variety of weapons. Um, and of course, it's a three-dimensional word, because it depends what we, if, if we're talking about uh, when these, the axe we're talking about was made. We know, again, we can go from the Neolithic times and Mesolithic times all the way up to modern splitting uh, wood splitting axes. So again, it's a very, very um, broad word. And of course, countries had different uh, ways of using it. But let's, let's begin by that. So um, how, uh, what countries used axes? Well, mostly everyone used axes. Um, we have examples of bronze axes in China. We have examples of axes in Europe, of course, particularly. Well, axes became very popular in Europe during the migration, migration era. Um, this is when they started to become more popular. But the real question here should be, were axes actual weapons or were they only tools for working? So is the whole concept of a battle axe a fantasy idea or was, does it have historical uh, background? Well, the answer is yes, axes were used as weapons and they were very common. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that I made happy quite a few people happy here with this, with this statement. But let's back it up historically. Probably one of the most famous examples of axes in iconography is the uh, Bayeux tapestry. Uh, this is one example where we see, again, Normans fighting against Anglo-Saxons, and we see men-at-arms and, and soldiers uh, wielding axes. Another example of a historical character wielding an axe, or at least who was cons it was said that he was wielding an axe, is Richard the Lionheart. As a matter of fact, he was also often recorded in Victorian iconography as a man wielding a very, very big uh, battle axe. Now, most likely the um, overall uh, shape and size of this battle axe was increased because of legend, but the fact that he was using a, a, a battle axe seems to have a historical basis. But what about the Vikings? Did the Vikings actually use axes? Because in Hollywood films and video games, we see Vikings wielding uh, axes, almost entirely axes, as if that was the only weapon that they had. Um, so, did they actually use axes? Well, the Vikings did use axes. The fact is that most likely they used axes, they didn't only use axes, that's the first thing. As a matter of fact, the most common kind of equipment of a Viking would be a shield and a spear. However, the axe, or the battle axe, was a stock weapon of Scandinavian foot soldiers and maritime marauders. Now, 
Another point that I would like to bring up is again this influence that we have from Hollywood, films, video games, this idea of, well, it's easy to compare a sword and an axe because a sword deals less damage but it's lighter and an axe deals more damage but it's uh, heavier. No, 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 absolutely not. Let, let, let's get the point straight. Again, what axe are we talking about? Now, we have just said that in history we did have um, battle axes, but we also have many other kinds of axes that would not qualify of weapon, as weapons. For example, uh, are we talking about a felling axe? Are we talking about a splitting axe, a broad axe? All these are tools, commonplace objects, and they would not be effective um, as weapons because that's not what they are designed for. So if you take one of those axes that I've just mentioned and compare them with a sword, there is no doubt a sword is a much better weapon. However, what is the difference between a, those axes that I've mentioned and an actual battle axe? So let's establish this first and then we will take the battle axes and we will compare them with swords. That would make much more sense. First thing, the weight. Believe it or not, a battle axe tends to weight a lot less than a um, tool axe, so an axe using for felling trees, for instance. The reason for that is that we need to understand uh, blade geometry and we need to understand um, that weight in battle can be a problem. For instance, a felling axe is an axe which is supposed to cut across the grain of wood. Now these axes tend to have their tips or blades very very sharp. Splitting axes on the other hand the blade geometry tends to be more has more of a wedge shape and that's because it doesn't need to cut through the grain of wood. It needs to split it without cutting. A broad axe instead is more of a precision work tool because it's used for hewing and the tip will be more sizzle shaped. Now Let's take these and compare them to a battle axe. A battle axe tends to have a, lot, a much more thinner um, blade or tip because it doesn't need to cut through uh, the grain of, of wood. It needs to cut through uh, skin, limbs, uh, etc. So arms, legs, for instance. So um, you don't actually need as much um, thickness in the blade uh, ge overall geometry uh, to achieve that. So someone might say, well, but if, if the bigger the axe, the better. Well, no, because of course an axe which is able to split wood is also able to split your opponent named John. However, um, all that extra weight is absolutely wasted and you don't want a, a, a weapon to be clumsy. If it's clumsy, it's not an effective weapon. Also, another thing to keep in mind is that a thinner blade also means that the wounds that it will produce will be deeper and grievous. So moving on to the weight of a battle axe, how much would a battle axe actually weigh? The normal standard weight of battle axes ranges from um, half a kilo to three kilos max, so one to six pounds, and the length varies from 30 centimeters to one and a half meters, which would be one to five feet. If it goes beyond that in length, it would not be an axe, it would be a polearm. Also, the, the idea of having an axe to be two-handed or one-handed again doesn't really have to do much with the weight of the said weapon, but more with the length of the haft. Longer hafts would, have to, would require two hands to be wielded and shorter uh, hafts uh, wouldn't, but the overall size of the blade wouldn't really change it that much. So you wouldn't really have an axe that it's so heavy that if you don't use two hands you, you actually can't wield it. You would probably have an axe with a point of balance that makes it a lot easier to wield with two hands and more comfortable. But you could still, if you wanted, use it with one hand. So again, having said all this, let's compare a battle axe with a sword. Well, a few there are quite a few differences. Um, for example, the first thing that I would like to talk about is clearly the point of balance. With a sword, the point of balance is a lot closer to the hilt, which makes it a lot more nimble and, and quicker to use than an axe, even if the amount of weight is similar in the same range, which, and we have seen that it 
it is possible. Um, in, in, the, in the case of an axe, the point of balance is a lot, sim it's a lot more similar to that of a mace or a, a blunt weapon. So it's towards the head of the, of the weapon. What that achieves is it's a lot better at cleaving. So it will, the impact force will be stronger. So it will be more effective than a sword against armor. Um, not that effective, of course, say a hammer or a mace would be more effective than an axe, but it would be more effective than, than just smashing a sword against uh, trying to cut plate armor because that doesn't work. At least the, uh, the head of the axe does have some um, impact force, which is a lot more than the thinner tip of a sword. So that makes it probably, that makes the difference between the two. But of course, again, a sword is a lot easier to use. So, in a duel against an unarmored opponent, just like I said in my video dedicated to sword versus maces, I would definitely go for a sword rather than an axe. A lot easier to recover from an attack uh, dealt with, with a sword than with one with an axe. So again, an axe is a bit of an in-between, um, between the effectiveness of a sword and the effectiveness of a mace. It's a compromise. You get some cutting power, which you would completely lose with a mace, but you also get some um, impact force which would be a bit more effective against an armor than a sword. Keeping in mind that we can also always half sword with this, so grab it or grip it from the blade and use it as a blunt weapon, which again would kind of even up the situation. So I think the real difference here is the costs of production. A an axe is a much cheaper weapon to produce than a sword. As a matter of fact, axes were very common because of that. And if you think about it, um, a sword is an upper class weapon, is a weapon of a rich person. And although they started to be used more and more in the Middle Ages by men at arms and, uh, and, and of course, knights, we have to consider that if you look at ancient times, you should ask yourself this question, what army used swords for the entire um, amount number of soldiers. The Romans, but not the barbarians. Why? It wasn't a cultural thing. It was an economical choice because the Romans had the Respublica first and the Imperium after, so they had a very strong economical base and they could afford um, soldiers, old soldiers using swords, so gladius, also because you have to consider that the Ro being a Roman soldier became a profession after the Marian reforms. So the whole structure and organization, meticulous organization of the, of the empire and late republic allowed this to happen. But barbarians, meaning uh, Germanic tribes and all that, did not have this kind of economical situation and organization, and they preferred using uh, axes because they were a lot cheaper um, and because of the social status that they, that they represented. There, is, of, there are, of course, some uh, weapons, which are, for example, poleaxes and halberds, that, yes, are technically axes, but they are basically polearms. And I will dedicate a specific video to those and the effectiveness of those, but just to say a couple of things. Personally, if I had to choose, and, and if I had to absolutely use something similar to an axe, then it would probably be a polax because of its effectiveness against plate. And if I had to fight against an opponent on horseback, I would go for a halberd because of its reach. All right, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. Thank you very much for watching, and remember, the Metatron has spread its wings. Please let me know what your thoughts are about this concept of axes and swords. What would you use? Let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't, have a look at the other videos of the same series. Goodbye.